Hey gang, how's everybody doing this week? Thanks so much for joining me once again as we continue our journey through the New Testament. And here we are this week in our fourth gospel, count on one, two, three, four, our fourth gospel, the gospel of John. And the cool thing is that this week we can honestly say we are in for something completely different. Uh, we have talked in the past about how Matthew, Mark, and Luke are in some ways very similar, and we also believe that they sort of borrowed from one another. We know that Mark was the oldest of the Gospels, and, and we believe that Matthew, the writers of Matthew and Luke, were checking Mark out and using that as a source and allowing that material to guide their own stories. But today, when we get to the Gospel of John, this is a whole new ball game, and I hope you do take a few minutes. I don't expect you to read the whole thing, but I, I hope you take a few minutes just to kind of leave through it, especially the beginning. Uh, look at that first chapter of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's language that we're not accustomed to. That, that's a completely different sort of birth narrative that we find, that we would find in Luke. So check that out and think about that, because... The writer of the Gospel of John is calling us to something deeper and a little bit more spiritual. Uh, the, the writer of the Gospel of John wants us to take what we know about Jesus and expand upon it. So here are a couple of themes that I want you to truly take away from this particular Gospel. The first is the writer of the Gospel of John wants us to know that Jesus and God are intimately connected, that they are in fact one. And when Jesus is at work in the world, preaching and healing and teaching, John wants us to understand that what we see in Jesus is really God's hope for the world. So this is important. Uh, not only is Jesus God's son, but Jesus is a kind of ambassador of God on earth. Here's another theme that comes up, this theme of light and darkness. Listen, all through this, this gospel, we understand that Jesus was the light that was coming into the world that no darkness could overcome. Jesus is a force for good that evil can't even comprehend or understand, let alone defeat. So Jesus, this light, this force for good, is really going to change some things in the world and once and for all defeat the devil and evil and become the light that shines so brightly that the whole of creation is transformed. And you consider that, I mean, that's enough, but that's not where it ends in the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John also wants us to know that as followers of Jesus, that we we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to become this light. Certainly we know that Jesus was crucified, he rose from the dead, he ascended to the Father. But now this awesome responsibility is passed along to us to allow the light to shine in creation, to allow other folks to see God's hope for the world unfold in our lives. This is really, really kind of cool that God would entrust us with this kind of responsibility. And I gotta tell you, friends, that this is a part of what's happening here in this confirmation process. We are coming to a deeper understanding of the promises that are made in baptism, but also of God's ex expectations of us and God's hope for us in the world. We can do some great things and we can do those not just for the sake of good, not just for the sake of the fact that they're the right thing to do, but we can do these things on behalf of God. Just as Jesus served the neighbor, we too have the capacity to serve the neighbor and transform the kingdom in which we live. Now, I'm going to dwell too much on that because you can see a lot of that kind of thing in the Gospel of John, and I hope you do discover that as you read some of the chapters. But as you read some of the chapters this week, I also want to pass along a little challenge for you. Throughout this whole gospel, Jesus works hard to make sure that everybody understands his identity as the Messiah, the one who will redeem the world, and also understand his identity as God's son. And so we know uh, that in this 
gospel, Jesus is busy saying things like, I am the bread of life. And that's just one example. So the challenge for this week is to leave through these pages. And if you want to do a Google search, I'm not going to know whether you did or you didn't. It's entirely up to you. But it's still the process of discovery is still important. I want you to find a couple or a few more of these I am statements. What is Jesus saying about himself in these I am statements? What he's saying is that he has come uh, to bless us, to bring us peace and fulfillment and healing, to connect us to God and to one another and provide us inspiration and substance in our lives. So check out the Gospel of John. See if you can find some of these I am statements. And I'll look forward to catching up with you guys soon. God bless you. Take care. Make sure to serve your neighbor and say your prayers. And I can't wait to see you again soon.